I feel like these things are counterproductive. This one's to help me sleep. This one has caffeine to keep me going. Hi peeps, welcome to Mental Health Naps. My name is Kaisa and today we're talking about Alamot, which is an old English word that stands for exhausted, half dead, to death. Okay. Listen. I'm ready for my cover vogue. So what you see here is a sleep apnea mask, CPAP. No, I am not the standard typical middle-aged overweight man who uh, snores. That is not my life, obviously. However, I still have sleep apnea. I'm ready for the runway. I had to get that off my head because it's not that all that comfortable. Thinking about, you know, myself over the years, um, I was always kind of tired, like, especially when I started puberty. I mean, puberty is exhausting in all the ways, granted. Um, trying to figure out, you know, how I made it through heavy strawberry lip gloss with the chokers. Exhaustion, it kept me from, you know, doing some fun things. So, a few years ago, um, when I got home from my mission that I served for my church, I was not in a good place. I was very sick mentally and physically. Um, I started going to the doctors and we started looking at all kinds of different reasons for why I was, you know, struggling so much with depression and anxiety. I actually went and um, had a sleep study done. In my sleep study, they thought they would find restless leg syndrome because of my age and because Nobody was suspecting that, you know, maybe I wasn't breathing when I was sleeping. So when I sleep, I don't snore. Um, maybe my family says otherwise. They're just like, it's a cute little, you know, something like that. But I go deathly quiet. This part, my nose and everything is kind of small. Um, so when I fall asleep and all of that relaxes, um, it closes the passage stopping me from breathing. So I actually have pretty severe sleep apnea, meaning that explained why I always felt like my battery was half full. You know, having only 50% energy like an old iPhone does. When we did the sleep study, I remember the doctor coming in and I was kind of sitting there like, I don't know what to expect because you know, they had 27 wires like attached to my head with like this gummy paste stuff, you know, with all of this, that was way fun to get out. He just looked at me and he said, you have pretty severe sleep apnea. And I was like, huh, so I'm literally not breathing in my sleep. And he's like, yes, you're literally not breathing in your sleep. And for a young woman who's in fairly good health, that's not common. That's not something we look for, I think is an issue. And I was like, okay. So I took these results back to my therapist and I was like, yo doc, listen, got sleep apnea. I have to use a CPAP machine that my father uses. It's not very attractive. And he said, because you are not getting the oxygen you need when you're asleep, your brain is not able to get the proper REM sleep that it needs in order to repair itself. So, over the years, while you've been struggling, feeling exhausted, depressed, anxious, and all the other words that go with mental health, your brain has literally been taking so many, like, punches and not healing itself. So, you have fallen below your baseline. And I was like, dang. So, there was a reason why I was taking all those naps or... There was a reason why I was always so tired or why I just didn't feel the ability or have the energy to like put myself out there. It was literally living two thirds of a life. It's so important and something that isn't talked about enough when it comes to mental illness is look at your sleep. And it's been really special for me because there have been some people who have read my blog They've told me they've been inspired to get a sleep study based on, you know, my experience. And they, they found out they had some sleep apnea and they're not, they do not fit the stereotype of what you think has sleep apnea. 
so important that, you know, to realize that with mental illness, a lot of times a pro there's a physical problem that is being manifested in itself, is being manifested by, you know, depression, anxiety, all that stuff. And um, honestly, it's kind of like a red flag or an alarm signal to tell you, hey, there's something wrong that you need to fix. And for years, my brain was trying to tell me, hey, yo, you're not getting enough sleep at night. You're not getting good sleep at night. There's a lot of life that is missed when you're tired or when you're trying to, when you're too exhausted to battle, you know, the depression or anxiety. And, you know, that's a tool that I use is sleep. What is amazing is when I learned that I had sleep apnea, I was kind of embarrassed. I was like, oh, I'm not. Because all of a sudden, sleepovers and everything turned into a huge deal. I had to make sure I had a plug, had to bring water, um, had to have a mask that's not attractive. Not that I want to look attractive when I sleep, not that it matters, but like it's the principle of a thing, call it pride. I remember when I first put on my mask, I set the machine up. It looks like something Apple might have made. It's like white and like really sleek. And um, I know I'm just calling a CPAP machine sleek, whatever. Anyway, and I put it on. It was like in the daytime and I, it just, it just put me to sleep. And I just remember feeling like my brain, like there was a part of my brain that had woken up that had never worked before. And I'm like, where were you like 10 years ago? With this blog post is I talk a lot about, you know, what it's like to have the sleep machine. And I talk about, you know, a lot about making sleep a priority as it should be. I mean, isn't there a statistic out there that we spent or that we spend um, a third of our lives sleeping? Might as well make it the best sleep that we possibly can get, right? Honestly, when it comes to sleep, like, I cannot stress it enough. Know how you sleep. Know if you're getting the right amount of oxygen. Because I'll tell you what, when I started sleeping with my sleep machine more regularly, everything in my head was starting to improve. Knowing about my sleep issues, it put another tool in my toolkit, in my arsenal of take that mental illness because... Now I got better Z's. They're sharper. I really stress that if you are struggling with mental illness, go get a sleep study. Like it has changed my life and it has changed how I am able to look at my mental illness and manage my mental illness. That's one reason why Mental Health Naps has the name that it has is because I think mental illness is more tied to our sleep than we realize. And I think it's important to just take a step back, you know, go to the doctor, say, I need a sleep study, go see an actual sleep doctor, do an overnight study, that's what I did, and figure out, you know, maybe it's not sleep apnea, maybe you have something else going in your sleep. Because that is, you know, you're supposed to wake up in the morning all energized and ready to just, you know, go. You're going to be more vulnerable if you struggle with mental illness because sometimes you know you wake up and you're just like hmm, I'm not doing today just not doing it putting yourself first when it comes to figuring out your mental illness you are not hopeless there is probably something more going on to the story than you realize and you might be surprised what it is you just have to take a, the time that it takes to go figure out what that is so you can make sure you're getting the, the proper care ahead and read Alamort. I feel like I should read that in a British accent because it's an old English word. Alamort. If you're British, I'm sorry. I'm My British accent is not my strongest. Let me know what you think. Do you think sleep's important? Um, I know that I think it's important, but I'm curious what you think um, because honestly, I think it's overlooked and I think that you know, everybody should have a sleep study, quite honestly, because there are so many things that can be solved if you start with something basic such as sleep. Go visit the blog. 
Um, I'll put the link down below in the description box. And until next time, have a nice nap.